Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from Outer Space. 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 And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Undiscovered Colors, written by Marilyn of many. Turlaw's parents were excited. The new species could see things that no one else could. Unprecedented. And a group of them would be visiting the ship today. And Turlaw's parents would get to meet them. Turlaw didn't see what the big deal was. Who cared if there were other colors other than those between black, white, and gray? That didn't sound like a useful thing to see. But to hear her parents tell it, this was the biggest discovery since... Oh, um, since the last one. Oh, I hope their envoys are good with words. Tula's father enthused. I can't wait to hear a description of these invisible colors. How must we look to them? Tula's mother asked. What if we have patterns or spots that we can't see? She spread her four white furred arms, gesturing at a pristine torso with the other two. Not a spot anywhere as far as Tula could tell. From a place on the climbing chair, Tula asked, Wasn't there some other species that they said could see special colors? Her father flicked an ear dismissively. The old trees, uh, they claim to, but they have never been interested in proving it. Probably an exaggeration at best. They do seem the time to make something like that up, for ego's sake, Tula's mother agreed. They're proud of so many things, their music, their storytelling, their history of outliving the trees that they evolved to blend in with. Tula put her chin down on top of her arms. Oh, right, the bug people who look like sticks. Yes, her mother said, but the new species will be nothing like them. These uh, humans really can see extra colors. Okay. Tula said. She tried to tell around one of the poles in the climbing chair and waited while her parents got ready for work. Soon enough, the family was out the door of their quarters, mom and dad to their respective workstations, and Tula to what passed as a school on the ship. Not much more than some babysitting robots, a stack of books, and a couple other kids. Her parents let her walk the distance by herself. It was safe and boring. As she passed the cargo bay, she overheard grown-ups talking about giving the humans a tour when they arrived. By the sound of it, they would be arriving soon. Tola uh, paused in the hallway. School was boring, but getting to see exotic newcomers first was not. She'd explored the hallways many a time on the walks to and from school, and she knew exactly where to hide. There was a wall panel just around the corner, and that could be pried loose with a little compartment behind it. Other people had used it before. The faint claw marks at the edges of the panel were what she'd noticed first, and there were several empty containers inside. But in a handful of times Tola had checked, nothing had been added or removed. That made it perfect now. She scurried ahead, glad to see no one in sight. Crouching furtively, she applied her claws and tugged the panel free, then wriggled in, while well, the front of the panel was the same smooth grey as the rest of the hall, the back was rough enough for her to pull the back into place with a click. Turla curled up to wait. The compartment was small but not cramped. Even the containers in the corner, faint light seeped around the panel. Conversations in the hallway were muffled, but only a bit. She listened. Cargo bay workers were concerned with cleaning up before they arrived. They moved crates around, bickering like Tola's cousins. It was comforting sound. Tola closed her eyes just for a moment. She hadn't gotten much sleep. What with her parents being so excited that they let bedtime slide? Surely she could just rest her eyes. The humans would arrive soon. When Tola started snoring, it was quiet enough that the busy cargo workers didn't notice. They had things to rearrange and argue about with important guests on the way. The cargo bay, which would be immaculate, never mind the fact that no ship in the fleet could claim such a thing, and no one really expected it. When the shuttle finally came into dock, the cargo bay was a tidy at best. Crates were in reasonable system of organization. Some may have been set in places where they regularly wouldn't be, but always in clean rows. The fact that one of those rows lined the hallway was low priority. Surely, the guests would breeze right by, and no one could possibly object. Turla woke 
to the sound of a dozen voices all speaking at once. The loudest voice was describing the hallway. It was the tour. She grabbed a rough panel and nudged it firmly, wondering why the light was so dim. The panel didn't move. She pushed harder. No luck, and the crowd was moving away. She braced her feet against the back wall and shoved, but still the panel held. By the time she decided that getting into trouble was worth it and called out to the grown-ups in the hall, the chattering crowd was moving away. Tula shouted. She pushed and hammered with many fists, but nothing helped. Outside the compartment, the crate hadn't shifted even a hair's breadth out of line. Down the hallway, the exotic guests were responding politely to the disorganized tour with many tour guides. They could indeed spot differences in color that the ship's crew couldn't. A stain here, a different type of metal there, unexpected food varieties in the cafeteria. It was enough to keep people enthralled for quite some time. More than enough time for the robotic attendants at the children's care center to remark on the unexpected absence. Enough time for them to contact the child's parents, though getting through to them was a challenge right now. Tula's parents were annoyed that she hadn't gone where she should have, and today, of all days, an attendant volunteered to search the halls and report back. After that fruitless report came, concern started to replace annoyance. Tula's parents excused themselves from their jobs to conduct their own search. They checked other places that Tola had been known to find intriguing. They didn't check an unobtrusive section of hallway near the cargo bay. More people got involved. The security was notified when the announcement of a missing child was broadcast to the entire ship. Hope was high that someone would appear with word about her, if not Tola herself. But no one did. The honored guests insisted in joining in the search. No one put up more than a token objection. The tour was complete enough, and this was very kind of them. It was very fortunate, too. Has anyone checked the secret compartment? asked the tallest human. The, the what? The security officer asked. Her ears flattened in dismay. The human pointed to one hairless hand. Over there, behind those crates. It's a long shot, I know. The officer directed people to move crates immediately. These weren't here earlier. Why do you say there's a secret compartment? The human's response was lost in the shouting of workers moving crates. I hear a voice! She, she's here! All souls rushed in to help. Once the crates were out of the way, a panel popped free and a tearful child stumbled out. Hands of many kinds helped her up while her parents were summoned. Tola! cried her mother and her father close behind. Tola hugged them fiercely with all of her arms, sobbing promises to never hide anywhere ever again. The sympathetic huddle of crewmates cheered in joy. The child had been found, all thanks to the honored guests. Without releasing the hug, Tula's father asked how they'd known where to look. The human laughed and pointed at the blank wall. I it's written right here in a color that I'm guessing you folks can't see. What is? Tula's father asked. If my translator is reading it right, it says, Boo Stash. Uh, oh, an intoxicant. The security officer's fur puffed up with anger. These old trees from the last cycle, I knew firing them wasn't the right choice. She calmed immediately. Of course, their degenerate habits did lead to this rescue, so maybe they're not complete shame of a race. Tula'a's mother said that she'd like to thank them. The various adults all agreed that that word should get out in the one way or another, at the very least to confirm for the galaxy at large that the old trees did indeed have some form of heightened colored vision. Whether they was to match for the humans was yet to be decided. And you may want to check the other graffiti, the tall human said. A shorter human was nodding enthusiastically. I wasn't going to say anything, but there's something really rude written on the ceiling back that way. The security officer looked annoyed again and asked the humans to assist in documenting the offenses. They agreed with body language that looked to Tula like they thought it was funny. Tula also thought that it was funny. She smiled about it quietly, still clutching her parents while the humans wished her well and went off to the security officer. Would you like to stay with us today? Her mother asked, and with a glance at her father. I don't think anyone would mind. Her father huffed. They better not. Tula nodded, her parents were brushing her ears. Yes, please. 
The family separated enough for her to clasp every one of her hands in theirs. Then they followed the crowd in the directions the humans had gone. End of story. The algorithm reckons you should be watching this video next, and I recommend that you should be always watching my video. So, click it, click With energy! And yes, clicking that does help the channel. Thank you very much. I just quickly want to thank the tier 5 patrons and channel members. Alithia Barkey, Ken Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Albard and Gaster, Arcadian, Lord Azrakal, and Joe Kumbaka.